Good afternoon. Our lecture for this afternoon would be on preterm labor. Contents of the lecture are the following. Its definition, risk factors, diagnosis, investigations, how to predict and prevent tocolytic, tocolytic agents, management, and preterm pre-labor rupture of memory. Definitions, preterm pregnancy is delivery before 37 weeks of gestation. Term is 37 to 41 weeks and 6 days. And post-term would be 42 weeks age of gestation. It is further subdivided into early preterm, which is less than 33 weeks and 6 days. Late preterm, 34 to 36 weeks and 6 days. And early term and term which would bring about to a birth less than 39 weeks short gestation, which comprises 35% of births in the U.S. Preterm labor is defined by the WHO as onset of labor prior to the completion of 37 weeks of gestation in a pregnancy beyond 20 weeks of gestation. Preterm labor is considered to be established if regular uterine contractions can be documented in at least 4 in 20 minutes or 8 in 60 minutes with progressive change in the cervical score in the form of effacement of 80% or more and cervical dilatation of greater than 1 cm. This condition tends to be overdiagnosed and overtreated. Nearly 50 to 60% of preterm births occur following spontaneous labor, and 30% would be due to preterm premature rupture of membranes. The rest would be iatrogenic terminations for maternal or fetal conditions. Half of all neonatal morbidity would occur in preterm infants, hence it is important to learn to recognize preterm labor. In spite of all major advances in obstetric and neonatal care, this has, there has been no decrease in incidence of preterm labor for over half a century. On the contrary, it has been increasing in the developed countries as more and more high-risk mothers dare to get pregnant. As far as epidemiology is concerned, preterm birth rate falls at 9.63% in 2015. This is according to Martin, 2017, from your Williams 25th edition. This is higher than your international rates, primarily because of methodology. Prior to 2007, it is based on last menses. On 2007 to current, it's obstetrical estimate of gestational age at delivery. So, prior to 2007, it's based on your menses. It's the blue one. Obstetric estimate is the green, showing a large difference from 2007, 2009, 2011, and 2013. However, the reduction of preterm births was due to change of methodology. Racial and ethnic disparities were also considered since black occurred, preterm delivery occurred more in black, more than white and Hispanic women, especially in preterm births that are less than 32 weeks. And this is attributed to socioeconomic circumstances. So preterm birth occurs in 5-12% to 12 of all pregnancies and accounts for majority of neonatal deaths and nearly half of all cases of congenital neurological disability, which includes cerebral palsy. A, uni a neonate weighing 1,000 to 1,500 grams, today has 10 times greater chance of survival than when it had in the 1960s. The focus is hence shifting to early preterm births, which is the less than 32 weeks, which account for 1 to 2 percent of all births, but contribute to 60 percent of perinatal mortality and nearly all neurological morbidities. And one of the major reasons for increase in incidence of premature births is the increase in numbers of multiple pregnancies, particularly higher order pregnancies resulting from the use of fertility drugs and assisted reproduction. Morbidity is primarily brought about by organ system immaturity. Survival rates would largely depend on birth weight and gestational age. If you are less than or equal to, more than or equal to 1,000 
grams or 28 weeks age of gestation for females or 30 weeks age of gestation for males, you have a 95% survival rate. And this slide just shows the different morbidities involving all organ systems in preterm labor. It has a short-term and long-term problems presenting in your pulmonary, gastrointestinal or nutritional, immunological, cerebral nervous system, ophthalmological, cardiovascular, renal, hematological, and endocrine. Threshold of viability is 20 to 26 weeks age of gestation, and a periviable period would have risks for morbidities. An age of gestation of less than 23 weeks would mean death, with a survival rate of just 5%. Preterm birth has different etiologies. Primarily, it would be infections, overdistension, such as in multiple pregnancies or higher order pregnancies, vascular, different surgical procedures, abnormal uterine cavity, cervical weakness, or sometimes idiopathic. So there are different risk factors, both non-modifiable and modifiable. Major non-modifiable risk factors would be a last birth preterm, that would be at least a 20% risk, and last two birth preterm would be a 40% risk. This would depend on your age of gestation according to a table in Williams. Twin pregnancy, you have a 50% risk of prematurity, as well as uterine abnormalities such as your uterine didelphis. Cervical anomalies, sex, weight, and factors in current pregnancy may also be a factor. Minor non-modifiable factors would be nulliparity or multiparity, more than five, ethnicity, poor socioeconomic status, education, and teenagers, teenagers having second or subsequent babies. Modifiable risk factors would be smoking. It, it gives a twice risk for preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes, drug abuse, especially cocaine, a BMI of less than 20, and an inter-pregnancy interval of less than a year. For diagnosis, there are symptoms with cervical weakness such as increased vaginal discharge, abdominal pain, or bulging membranes upon examination. There are also symptoms in, um, related with infection and abruption, such as lower abdominal pain and painful uterine contractions. Diagnostic criteria would be gestational age less than 24 to 37 weeks, with uterine contractions of at least 3 contractions in 30 minutes, so that is 1 contraction in 10 minutes, or in cervical change dilatation of at least 2 cm. Differentials would be the following. There's your UTI, degeneration of fibroids, abruption, constipation, and gastroenteritis. For diagnostic approach, history could never be emphasized more and your examinations, physical examinations, and your investigations of your CBC, CRP, urine sample, ultrasound, fetal fibronectin, etc. So prevention, it is important to treat bacterial vaginosis. If, it's, if your cervical is dilating, you may do cervical cerclage. Reduction of pregnancy numbers if it's artificially reproductive technique. And the use of progesterone is um, advised. So for prediction, we look at cervical length. So this is through transvaginal ultrasound. And normal length of the cervix would be 3.5 millimeters. So in asymptomatic women with singleton pregnancy, cervix is less than 15 millimeters long, 
the risk of delivering before 32 weeks is 4%. If it's less than 5 mm long, risk of delivering before 32 weeks is 78%. In symptomatic women with singleton pregnancy, a less than 15 mm long cervix would have a risk of delivering within 7 days is 50%. And the cervix more than 15 millimeters long risk of delivery within 7 days is less than 1%. So cervical length is very important. Clinically, uh, a cervical length of less than 2.5 may already warrant admission for control of preterm labor. Your fetal fibronectin, this is a glue-like protein at chorio-decidual interface offers rapid assessment of risk in symptomatic women with minimal cervical dilatation. It's a protein that is not usually present in cervical vaginal secretions at 22 to 36 weeks. Hence, a positive test indicates that women is likely to deliver. It predicts preterm birth within 7 to 10 days of testing, implying that this, there is a disruption of your chorio-decidual interface. So these would be guidelines and for obstetric interventions for threatened and imminent periviable delivery. So at 22 weeks, at less than 22 weeks, or at 23 weeks and 24 weeks, so different interventions are listed and some are not recommended and some you could consider and recommend. So we have different tocolytic agents to control preterm labor and steroids. This is used to prevent labor and delivery. This may prolong pregnancy but not for more than 72 hours. So this is useful for fetal lung maturity by maternal steroids and transportation of a mother to a facility with a neonatal intensive care. So these are the important tocolytic drugs. Uh, magnesium sulfate has a reduced role in controlling preterm labor. However, um, it has been shown and it has been given to preterm deliveries primarily for neuroprotection. So magnesium sulfate is a competitive inhibitor of calcium and overdose is treated by calcium gluconate. Side effects would be respiratory depression, muscle weakness, and pulmonary edema. Magnesium sulfate therapeutic levels would be at 4 to 7 um, milligrams per deciliter. So your respiratory depression, muscle weakness, and pulmonary edema, your reflexes would be affected at more than at least 7 level of magnesium sulfate. Then there's your beta adrenergic agonist, it's your terbutaline. Side effects would be tachycardia, hypertension, hypokalemia, and hyperglycemia. One of the favorite um, agents to control preterm labor nowadays and one of the first line would be our calcium track channel blocker which decreases intracellular calcium. Example is nifedipine. Uh, side effect would be hypotension, myocardial depression, and tachycardia. For prostaglandin synthetase inhibitor, this is your impumetacin, so it decreases your muscle contractility. There would be fetal complications like oligo, hydramnios, premature closure of your ductus, and necrotizing enterocolitis restricting their use. So steroids reduces the rates of respiratory distress, intraventricular hemorrhage, and neonatal death. And this is given as an IM injection, two doses, 12 to 24 hours apart. So maximum benefit is seen after 48 hours. So dexamethasone or betamethasone is either given um, to promote lung maturity. To manage preterm labor, we confirm labor using the three criteria listed above. So rule out, of course, if the tocolytics are not contraindicated, administer, administer IV line, 
start your magnesium sulfate tocolysis, then administer your maternal betamethasone to stimulate your type 2 pneumocyte. So we must have a clear plan about mode of delivery, how do we monitor, presence of a pediatrician during a delivery, and the use of antibiotics in labor. So we have our preterm pre-labor rupture of membranes. So rupture of fetal membranes, which occurs before 37 weeks of gestation. It complicates about 3% of pregnancies and contributes to one-third of preterm births. Risk factors would be ascending infection of lower genital tract, multiple pregnancy, polyhydramnios, antepartum hemorrhage, placental abruption, cervical weakness, and sometimes. Hepatic. Sometimes it's spontaneous and unexplained preterm birth. So diagnosis of PPROM, so history of sudden escape of watery amniotic fluid. And on ultrasound, there's oligohydramnios. So there would be pooling of amniotic fluid in your posterior vagina. So you do your speculum exam. So, a sterile speculum examination confirms that the fluid is coming through the os. Nitrogen test could be used. It turns blue from yellow if there's amniotic fluid leak. You could do a fern test. This is taking an amniotic sample and studying it under the microscope. A fern test would show the presence of progesterone, meaning amniotic fluid has broken up. Ultrasound examination, which shows oligohydramnios. And amnesia test, this is an immunochromatical method which detects trace amount of placental microglobulin. So this needs to be differentiated from stress urinary incontinence and profuse normal vaginal discharge, UTI, or any vaginal infection. So correct and prompt diagnosis is imperative for optimal management. If it's remote from term, conservative management is advisable provided there are no acute cord complications like prolapse and compression, abruption, and fetal distress. Oligohydramnios is not an indication. So antibiotics may help to prolong latency and improve perinatal outcomes. Corticosteroids should be given to patients between 24 and 34 weeks age of gestation. Near term, it is preferable to induce labor unless fetal lung maturity or gestational age is doubtful. A serial amnioinfusion for less than 26 weeks pregnancies with PPROM and severe oligohydramnios in selected women would reduce the risk of pulmonary hypoplasia and improve neonatal survival. Thank you for listening to this preterm labor lecture. Please subscribe to my channel for more lectures on obstetrics and gynecology. Thank you.